guys, how's everyone doing? Hope you're all doing very well. It's Vinayak here. In this video, I thought I would share a project that I had worked on during my master's at Concordia. It'll be in the topic of MPC or model predictive control. So this will be a tutorial video of how MPC actually works and a beginner's course. Um, I'll be going over my code in Python in detail and also I'll be explaining the MPC algorithm used. So model predictive control should it be of interest to you if you're interested in autonomous vehicles, um, self drug driving cars, chemical engineering process control, because it is based on optimization as I had made in my last video on optimization and simulink. So a lot of the concepts from that video will be brought here. I know a lot of MPC papers and textbooks, they don't explain it very well. There are several books out there on MPC and I'll be saying MPC a lot because I don't want to say model predictive control the entire time in the video. So, so in this video, we'll be going over the efficient MPC algorithm. This was developed by the researchers at University of Sydney. So let's begin with a, a little conceptual understanding of how it works. So the best way to do this is an example. So let's say that you are driving your car, you're driving between point A and point B. Your car can only go so fast and it can, it can only speed up like so fast, right? Because um, your car acceleration is limited. You also have limits on how fast you can turn your steering wheel angle. So between point A and point B, you think ahead. So like, what will I do in the next 10 seconds? Will I speed up? Will I slow down? And then based on that, you will obviously hit the accelerator or the brake, right? So for example, you see traffic up ahead. Um, you want to stop your car. So you're going to hit the brakes and your speed will go down. This prediction is what is exactly done in model predictive control. So you actually predict things. You don't solve things at the current moment in time. So in this picture here, you can see the past and the future. We have, you have your prediction interval. You can think far ahead or you can think just one step ahead in time. Along the prediction points, you have to calculate the predicted outputs. So let's say that if you're slowing down, you want your speed to be zero. You, you will hit the brakes to make sure that it's zero. So you're trying to minimize the error between what you predict and what you want things to be. You make a prediction, you compare your prediction to the, the what you want to achieve, you find the error, and then based on the error, you get your system inputs. In this example, it would be sp speeding up or slowing down, right? So you have your sampling time there. So MPC is mostly used for discrete systems because in real life for an autopilot, for example, or any autonomous vehicle, you have to use discrete times because that's how the microprocessor will work. So your sampling time is there. And for this example, we'll be looking at an airplane simulation. This was taken straight from the paper, which I showed before. I'm going to essentially remake that here in Python. I didn't have any background in it before. I didn't know any optimization stuff until I actually came to my master's program. So I actually tried to re redo the simulation in the paper just to get a better understanding of MPC. I think this is the best way to learn if you see a new concept and if you see a paper in that field. The best thing you can do is try and you know redo what the researchers did so you can understand things better because it's one thing to read and then it's a lot better to actually do it yourself. So. This simulation will take you step by step how MPC is done. So you have five states, two inputs, two outputs. Your F, G, E, and K matrices will be of that size as follows. Um, I do recommend you actually go skim the paper at least once before you watch this watch ahead because you will understand the video a lot better. So let's begin. So this is my Python simulation files. You can download these on GitHub and then when you open them, first go into params.py because that is where I have my parameters and my system model. So in this file, you can change the model if you want to design your own system. So you can change A, B, C and D there. Lines 22 to 28. That's my sampling time, 0.01 seconds. CT.SS is the state space model. But first, I'm just going to show you my imports. I have to import NumPy, the controls toolbox, SciPy, along with matplotlib because I need to use these tools to perform my simulations. So make sure you have them imported. It's not going to work if you don't have these. So please don't miss that. I use my zero order hold to 
to discretize my system into discrete time state space models. Those are my constraints. I only have the first four elements of G because the last four are based on the inputs at the previous time step. So those will need to be operated in real time. So I can only define the first four now. These are my absolute constraints, 0.8, negative 0.2. As before, my M stays constant. And then I have my operating point. I have my weighting matrices Q and R, lines 52 to 54. So that's needed for the MPC simulation to solve your feedback and your design. Matrices F and G. In functions.py, I have a number of functions to solve the MPC matrices along with the optimization loops. So first I have my STM matrix function. So that solves for F, G and H. In this picture, you will see it very properly and you will understand it more. I'm just using Python syntax to obtain what I need to get for F, G and H. It's simple math, simple calculations. So make sure you follow this and you obtain something similar. The syntax in Python is different for NumPy and SciPy, so keep that in mind if, if you're using SciPy instead of NumPy. This function checks my constraints to make sure that they meet. If they don't meet, I will need to use my optimization. But if they do meet, I can skip over my optimization so I can save a bunch of time. I can just assign my unconstrained solution inputs. And you will see this in more detail in the main file, which I will get to next. These are my two optimization loops, HQP and PQP. So HQP stands for Hildreth's Quadratic Programming. This is a very popular method used for many decades. It was invented back in 1957, I believe. And the PQP algorithm is the Parallel Quadratic Programming, which I covered extensively in my last video. So please watch my video on optimization if you are new to it and if you want to understand it better for MPC because I'm not going to go over these algorithms here because they will take way too long. But in my last video, I do a Simulink implementation of PQP so you will get it there in a much better sense. So please watch that if you need to. Here I get my set points for height and speed. So I make the height change as, as time because I want the plane to take off and then descend. But I want it to maintain a fixed velocity. This is quite realistic because in real life applications you can see how the pilots maintain the plane at a constant speed. But they can make the plane take off and descend at that speed. So it is like a realistic scenario. So should be very practical for MPC control design. The syntax I use la.inverse identity transpose. Um, this is all Python syntax. So take a second look at this in more detail if you want to understand it better. Diag is the diagonal matrix there. So keep that in mind. And you can take a matrix exponential e to the power of a matrix as I did there. So quite useful stuff. Python does have a lot of tools which are all free. I know some of you may not have MATLAB or may not afford it, it's very expensive, so Python is a good alternative to it. I also use deep copy because I need to copy my old Lagrange multiplier within the optimization. So here is my main function I have. I define k equals zero, my simulation time, my time step, the B matrices, the number of states, number of inputs, number of outputs. I then go into my prediction point k value because for the future set point it has to be 3 divided by 0 0.01 steps ahead. That's my value of np. Then I have my delta x which is my initial states, my initial inputs, initial outputs. I make blank arrays to plot everything. I then call stm to solve fg and h for mpc. I put the page picture one more time so you can see what they are again. Then I get my set points, I get my feedback as per the paper, and then I have my simulation loop. So here I just go one time step ahead. I solve for each time step, the states and the outputs, delta x and delta y. And then I can get my predicted outputs for MPC. So I use f, I don't use g now, just f. I get the error. So that's the set point minus the predicted output for each different output. So calculate it separately, transpose it, get my unconstrained solution and then check if it meets the constraints. So first you need to find G2. So these are the last four elements of G. It's a NumPy array. So it's a simple array and then append it to the previous G which I had before. 
So now you have G which is an 8 by 1 vector. Check the constraints if it meets it. Set it to the unconstrained solution or if it does not call the optimizer. So use this to solve for the constrained inputs and then reset the constraints, update the control system and then move on to the next time step. When that's done, make x, y plots of everything. So if you look at the plots, you can see how it tracks very, very well for the height and the forward speed u. So you can see how there is no error in steady state. And if you look at the input settings for the speed and the elevator, they also match up well. So you do save a lot of time and then you do make sure that the constraints are all met. So that's it for the video guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something new and I'll see you next time. Bye.